Right, this is going to be a, an update video on testing Tomos moped ignition coils. Um, I did a couple previously. The first one was done outside and the sound wasn't very good because it was a windy day. And the second one just covered um, the external ignition coil fitted to the 12 volt Tomos A3s and A35s. So this is going to be a, a little bit more uh, all encompassing for the different ignitions fitted to Tomos mopeds, um, classic ones. Um, as well as put maxis because there are some similarities. Um, so what we got there, that is off the early uh, A3 engine and put maxi up to about 84. And then that one there is from 85 onwards when they switched over to 12 electrics. And then that one at the back then is uh, that one there is off the later A35 and early A55 that had electronic ignition systems fitted. Um, so, on the Maxi and the early A3, you'll have a stator plate that looks like that, and there's the ignition core there, that black thing. Um, ignore these two orange cores, they're for lighting. So, what I have here, this is an aftermarket one for a Maxi, or a Thomas A3 early. Um, I know for a fact this one has failed, so I'll show you what a failed one looks like first. All right. So there are two windings on a coil, primary and secondary. Um, the primary has far less turns of wire than the secondary, so it has a lower resistance reading. The secondary has many more turns of wire, um, so it has a higher resistance reading. Um, and the reason they fail is, the secondaries fail, is because the wire has to be much thinner to get the more turns of wire in such a compact space. So, connect your multimeter, black wire, to the metal kind of core of the coil. Um, if it's auto ranging, it'll set the to measuring resistance and it'll figure out what it needs to set itself to. If it's a manual one like mine, set it to the lowest resistance scale doing the primary winding, so it's got the ground on, that wire there, there you go, 1.6 ohms, so I know that's okay. Change the scale to 20 kilo ohms because the secondary winding if it's working is usually between about 4.5 and, and 9 kilo ohms. So I then, still with the ground connection where it was, just move the red test probe to where the HD lead goes, and you'll see there's nothing. That's because it's an aftermarket one, and even though I spent £20 on it, it was completely fudged within about three months of riding. Um, if I do the same test again, this is a Bosch one of a Maxi. It's best part of 40 years old, um, and it's still mounted to the stator like it would be in your bike. You can connect the ground lead to the stage itself. 200 ohms, low scale, test the primary winding, and it is as it was before, so we know that winding is fine. Shift the scale up to 20 kilo ohms, connect it to where the HDV goes, and there you go. Just under 5k, which is perfect for this type of core. So, you know, 40 years old, still works fine. Brilliant. Um, that system was used up to about 19, end of 1984 on Thomas A3s, not sure about A3, uh, Maxis, um, but from 85 onwards, Tomos switched to um, kind of a source coil, which provided the power for an externally mounted ignition coil. Um, the source coil fitted instead of the internal ignition coil there, so it kind of went in that position. Um, there is almost an identical coil, that one there that fits there. Don't test this one, the one with the yellow lead is for your lights, um, unless you've got a problem with your lights. Then by all means test it. As this is just generating a source of power for the external coil, there's only one winding on there. So same again, low reading, 
So it's going to be 200 ohms. A bit rusty this one, so. Let's see what we get. So there we go. Two ohms on that, 1.9, two ohms. So we know that one is okay. I should be generating power to reach the external one. Um, these are mounted on the frame on the left hand side on 85 bikes uh, from 86 onwards for some reason. They then put a bracket on them and bolted to the actual engine case itself. Um, to test these, that is actually your ground connection, even though it's a white wire. The same as the primary connection on that, it's used for different things. You need to test from there and there. So low resistance scale still, ring terminal for ground and then we use that's usually where the black wire goes on the on the wiring loom coming up from the engine so the primary winding on that is 2.3 ohms I'll shift over to check the secondary winding There you go, 8.3. It's a little bit higher than the older type of coil, and I think the reason for this was it it gives an improved spark um, over the older type of ignition system. Um, there's probably many more turns of wire in there to enable to do that, um, hence the high resistance reading. So it could be another area that's prone to fail, but I've never had one fail just yet. The late A35s and A55s had an electronic ignition system, so there's no points or condenser. Um, so that's the external coil for those. Looks completely different, doesn't it? Um, they didn't use one of these inside the magneto to generate power for it. They had uh, stator windings that was just there for producing power for the electrics on the bike in general. Um, actual power for well, the trigger pulse for the external coil came from a pulsar coil which was fitted to the outside of the magneto and there would be a little magnet on here and as it passed the pulsar coil, I'm touching it, just passed it, at that point it would tell that pulse, would tell the ignition coil to send the spark to the spark plug. So, no moving parts, apart from the spinning magneto. Um, so, less prone to failure, but they can fail. Um, I haven't got a pulse of coil off of a A35 or A55 to hand. This is one off a GY6 engine, but it operates in exactly the same way. So to test it, a ground connection there. Set it to a low scale again, because I don't expect this to be very high. Single wire connection, 139.2 ohms. So I presume, I mean, it came off a running engine, so it works it's a bit manky, but it could be put back into service. I suspect there's an, an issue with this coil. Um, they put the ground connection on there, low scale. And I get nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, I just sort of just shift the scale around to see anything that comes. I haven't got any kind of tech specs for these type of um, coils, so one thing I do know is the actual secondary winding, which is still tested in the same way of where the HT lead goes, does give you an actual reading. Which is almost identical to the, um, the very early uh, type of coil. 
you know, that type there. So, I know the secondary wind on this is working fine. I'm not sure why I'm not getting a reading on the primary. Um, but with not knowing what the resistance should be for that, I can't say for sure if it's failed or not. But it did come from a running bike, so... Further investigation is required. Um, just an example on the similarities on the, the Pook and the early Thomas ignition systems. Um, that's a Yugoslavian made Iskra flywheel. That's a German Bosch one off a Maxi. There you go. You can actually swap these over. Um, the arrow does point in a different direction on this one to that one. But they are interchangeable. This is another Bosch one. Um, this one, the actual arrow points in the same direction as the um, the Iskra one, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, but so there is some parts interchangeability between the early Tomas A3 and Pook Maxi emission systems. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, as long as you've got a multimeter, um, just to once. Probably better if your eyesight's like mine, not brilliant. Um, and it's very handy to have the crocodile clips as well because you're not having to juggle two different test probes. You can just connect this to your suitable ground and just poke away with that. So, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank my subscribers. Any new subscribers? It's most welcome. Um, next video will probably be on my A3K that I've been taking far too long to restore. Um, it's... what is it? B-Reg? So it's probably one of the, the last ones. Um, I think it's a late 84. Um, so it's got the 6-volt ignition system fitted to it. Um, I've just explained. Uh, when I bought it the front end was missing completely. I think somebody must have pushed it into a wall. Um, so I've had to put a restore a complete front end for it, find a front wheel for it, lights, and bars, anything that was missing, and respray it. Um, but I don't want to respray the rest of the frame because I'm trying to keep it as original as possible. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tidy the bench up at some point and we'll have a good look at that soon. So. Thanks for watching and uh, take care.